this one occasionally. Is it uh, two C's and one S or one C and two S's? Two C's and one S. Thank you. How many O's? Two. <laughs> Doesn't look right, are you sure? Yes. Well, look it up. You look it up. I use another word. <laughs> Spasmodically. <laughs> June, is that one C and two L's? Why don't you just put now and again? Good idea. <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> What is it now? How does this sound? <clears throat> it was a dull, leaden sky. White, fleecy clouds scudded across the moon. The wind gently caressed the branches of an old willow tree. And in the distance, a star twinkled now and again. It's <laughs> a funny way to start a letter to the gas board. <laughs> oh, no, dear. I, I, I finished that ages ago. Oh, who are you writing to now, then? Nobody. It's not a letter, it's a novel. A what? That is the very first sentence of my book. I didn't know you were writing a book. Well, I only decided a few minutes ago. Oh, I see. Well, what, what, do you, what do you think? Well, it's a bit like the weather forecast. Well, I'm just setting the scene. I mean, give us a chance. I'm, there's plenty more to come. Hmm, there'll have to be. I'm on page 198 of this, and I'm only halfway through. Oh, good Lord, better get on with this then, haven't I? Oh, yeah. Ah, star twinkled now and again. Um, an owl hooted with derision. O W L. Thank you. <laughs> derision. Derision. D E R I S I O N. Honestly, darling, if you're going to ask me how to spell every other word, it's going to take you ten years to write that book. But nobody expects a masterpiece overnight. It takes time, thought, patience, inspiration. A dictionary. And a wife who can keep her mouth shut. <laughs> I mean, I mean, spelling isn't important. I mean, what matters is what you've got to say. Yes. What have you got to say? Well, I mean, I don't know yet, but it's all up here. They say that everybody's got a book inside them, but not everybody bothers to do anything about it. Well, good for you. I mean, I've been thinking about it for years, but with the kids around, well, I haven't been able to concentrate. But now it is different. Uh, when one comes to the September in one's life, that's good. I must make a note of that. It's a bit of a cliche, dear. Well, life is a cliche. It's the same old story we act out. I mean, look behind any neck curtain, you'll find drama, love, hate, passion, jealousy, lust. You mean the Robinsons? No, dear. <laughs> Not anybody in particular. It happens all the time in any house. There hasn't been much lust in this one lately. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. What about the time I tore your blouse to shreds? Oh, yes, but that was getting it out of the spin dryer. <laughs> Look, don't keep interrupting me. A writer needs peace and quiet and the right environment. Well, perhaps you should take a little cottage in Stratford-on-Avon. Yes, good idea. Yes, good. After all, he managed to churn it out all right up there. <laughs> Darling, you're not going to compare yourself with Shakespeare. Oh, no, no. Good heavens, no. Only in as much as he was another writer. Well, I mean, that's where the similarity ends. I mean, I, I shan't be treading on his toes. <laughs> oh, no, I should, be, I should be going for quite a different sort of stuff. Uh, stuff that will appeal to a much wider public. More like Harold Robbins. Oh, my word. Could you spell carpetbaggers? <laughs> Thank you. An owl hooted in derision. A tall, loose-limbed, pipe-smoking Grant Faversham. Step lively from the tube station at Ealing West. Oh, look. I think I shall step lively into another no, no, room. No, 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 you stay put. No, you stay put. No, no, no. A, a writer is a very lonely person. All he asks is a, a bit of encouragement, and when it's justified, a little praise. All right, darling, what is it you want to know apart from how to spell? Well, I mean, do you think that I'm on the right track? Well, how can I tell? I mean, all I know so far is that this chap called Grant Faversham has got out of the tube on a dull night. Yes, that is the story so far. Well, may I ask a question? Yes. Why did the owl hoot with derision? Good, good point, good point. 
Maybe he knew the man's name was Grant Faversham. <laughs> what is wrong with Grant Faversham? Well, it's a bit of an old-fashioned name. In fact, I think there was actually someone in the Four Feathers. What pub is that? <laughs> Not the pub, the book. Oh, that book. Yeah, well, I'll change it then. What about Wesley Court? Sounds like a block of flats. <laughs> Matthew Parker. That's our big club. Is it? <laughs> I just showed you, you've got to be careful, haven't you? <laughs> I mean, you, you can't have anybody like the vicar in this sort of story. <laughs> what sort of story is it going to be? Well, a classic. Ah, I should have known. Yeah, but a classic, a classic of today. A type that can't possibly fail. It'll have all the good things that a, a really good book should have, like vice, immorality, adultery, rape, orgies, sauna bars. <laughs> but not. And then in the second chapter, the plot really thickens. <laughs> Sounds pretty thickening already. Are you sure it's what the public wants? Of course. I mean, that's what life's about today. Pack it with the raw facts and you can't go wrong. Oh, so like hot cakes. Then there's the film rights, serial rights, paperbacks. I mean, you can make a fortune out of one book. Well, you better get on with it then, because we could do with a new washing machine. Yes, you're right. I'm wasting time. <laughs> now, so where have I got to? Ealing West. Thank you. Um... Um, let me think now. Grant Faversham? No, 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 I'll, I'll have to change the name. No, you're right, no. Look, uh, tell you what, here's a phone book. Me up, you pick one. Go on, anyone, at random. Go on, go on, what have we got? Mac Fisher is. <laughs> Trust you, look, I'll leave the book. I'll, I'll, I'll pick my own name. What, Terry Fletcher? No, no. Ah, Randolph Hawke, that's better. I think Randolph's a bit pretentious. Well, I'll call him Randy for short. <laughs> Randy Hawk strode with a purposeful step, determination written across his face. He walked with hunched shoulders to the phone box and then stopped and lit another cigarette. He's already smoking a pipe. <laughs> Stop interrupting. Look, you're ruining my slow. Look, um, feverishly he dialed and waited. Then came the sensuous voice that turned his blood to fire. The whole of his body tingled with anticipation as she murmured, Would you like some cocoa? Would you... <laughs> I'll bet Ernest Hemingway never had this trouble. What, dear? We've got an author in the family, Lucy. Terry's decided to write a book. Oh, how exciting. What's it about? Sex. <laughs> Sorry, I asked. Torrid, white hot sex. You know, darling, I can't help feeling you're making it awfully hard for yourself. What do you mean? Well, isn't it better for an author to write about a subject he knows something about? <laughs> now, what are the first words she would say to this man in her bedroom? With any luck, it might be, let's put out the light and go to sleep. <laughs> when we have to move to Switzerland to avoid taxation, <laughs> I trust you remember the generous encouragement you gave me. Ah, yes, but then the sound of yodelling might drown that infernal typewriter. <laughs> I'm sorry, but while I'm in the mood, I must finish this first chapter. Well, use a pen, preferably a luminous one. <laughs> Let's put the light out. Oh, you don't understand, June. You never will understand the, the torture that an author goes to when he's trying to describe in vivid detail two people about to discover each other in the, in the bedroom. Couldn't they do it in the spare room? <laughs> don't move. Don't stay, stay, stay as you are. Don't move with muscle. Just stay exactly like that. Now, now this is where you can help me. Come on, out of bed, out of oh, bed. Oh, Terry! Yes, come on, come on. Oh, is this really necessary? Yes, absolutely, Piper. Now, look. Now, <clears throat> sit, sit on the end of the bed. That's right. Uh, and uh, drape yourself a bit with one leg on the floor. You know, drape. <laughs> like that. <laughs> well, sort of, sort of. Now, now lean back, lean back and, and pull your hair over one eye. <laughs> Your arm is too short. Well, give me the towels and look. Hey, I just had it set. Well, I can't help that. I mean, I want a wild gypsy on the bed here, not Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> there. Right, that's it. Right, now don't, don't move. Don't move. It's very uncomfortable. Too bad. Too bad. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, what does it look like? I'm Randy. 
to sleep. No. <laughs> June, I am Randolph, the character in the book, you see. I mean, he's bare-chested, he's wearing tight-fitting jeans, he's walking like a panther. On an old horse? No. <laughs> June, please don't interrupt. I'm trying to remember these, these vital moments. Now, you see, you're this woman who's hungry for love. And there's this man, this villain man. And this is their first meeting. And, and she's there with her eyes... Smouldering. Go on, smoulder. I am. No, you're not. Well, it's the best I can do at this hour. Anyway, I'm not cut out for smouldering. Well, I mean, any, anybody can smoulder. I mean, all you have to do is, is half close your eyes. That's squinting. That's not smouldering. Oh, uh, forget it, forget it. If you can't, if you can't smoulder with thinking of something else, can you, can you be sultry? Oh, yes, I think so. Right, right. Close your eyes and pout a bit. What? Pout. Pow. <laughs> You're not blowing up a balloon. Pow. I can't. Oh, I give up. You can't pout. You can't smolder. Didn't they teach you anything at that convent of yours? Yes. I was always very good at hockey. Well, look, <laughs> you've not come here to play hockey. Now, come on. Lean back. Lean back. Close your eyes. And shut your mouth. <laughs> and try to imagine that ecstasy is close at hand. <laughs> paused in the doorway, and by the half-light, he caught his first glimpse of Celeste. <laughs> Even now, he felt the vibrant passions within him. The tang of her perfume touched his nostrils. He knew, she knew, they knew that it was inevitable. He moved towards her. A soft, warm carpet caressed his feet. He could... He could hear her regular breathing. See the white marble. The white marble of her shoulders. He thought then how fragile she looked, but as, she, as he towered above her, he knew that the raging torrents of passion were just about to be unleashed. <laughs> June, wake up! Oh, sorry. Where did you go to? You were just about to unleash the raging torrents of passion. Oh, was I? Yeah. Must be nice. Well, no, no, come on, look, don't say anything. Just don't say anything. And look at me with desire. <laughs> well, the nearest thing you can get to desire. Randy eased himself onto the bed. His powerful arms grasped her and drew her to his pulsating chest. Feverishly, his lips shook hers. As together they melted into the volcano of love. Ooh! Is that passion? No crap! Quick, do something! Yes, all their films are, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all a load of rubbish. Oh. Which reminds me, how's the masterpiece? Well, I've started it again, and this time I've, I've made it more real. Um, June, I want to ask you something. Um, have, a, have a drink? Huh? Well, I've had two already. Oh, good. Um, vodka and tonic? Well, just a small one. Right, OK. Um, June... <clears throat> It was something you said last night that sparked it off. Something I said? Yeah. Um, you know, you know the man who wrote the Contiki exhibition, expedition? Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, he had to go on it, didn't he? Yes. I mean, you know, he, he had to actually do it before he could write about it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, take Mrs. Beaton. Mrs. Beaton? Yeah, she wrote recipes, right? Right. Yeah, well, I mean, I'd be very surprised if she just made them up. No, she probably tried them all out first. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry, darling, I, I don't follow you. What are you trying to get at? Well, drink up. Um, now, 
The point is, I mean, they, they, they had to do a certain amount of practical research to, to give it authenticity, didn't they? Yes, but I don't see what they had to do with your book. Don't you? <laughs> Unless your Randy Hawk is going on an expedition and cooking for himself. <laughs> No, you, you've, uh, you've missed the point, June. I wish you'd hurry up and get to it. Yeah, uh, drink up, June. Um, you see, what you said last night, put your finger on the trouble that I'm having with this book. You see, if I'm going to write about all this sex stuff, um, I should really know, know more about it. Oh, darling, I was only joking. I mean, how could I know anything about sex? I mean, I'm a married man. <laughs> Silly, I've never had any complaints. Ah, no, but this is different. I, I'm talking about a mad, passionate love affair. Oh, and you think there's never been any mad, passionate love between us? Well, yes, God, but that was before we were married. <laughs> <laughs> is this your way of telling me that you're having an affair? Oh, good heavens, no. But don't you see, I need one. What? I don't want one. No, no, it's just purely for research. Oh, yes. You see, the, these two new characters of mine in the book, I mean, they're more mature. I mean, they're both married, but not to each other. I see. And they have an affair, do they? Yes. Yes. Oh, they're thrown together by fate. And there's this instant spark that's fanned into a burning, fiery passion. I mean, they both know it's wrong, but they can't fight it. Oh, rubbish. No decent, respectable married woman would allow herself to be fanned. Oh. I trust you to say something obvious. I mean, I can read you like a book. I mean, you just can't write it. No. No, not unless I have an affair with a married woman. You do, and you won't be a married man anymore. Do you really mean that? Well, of course I do. Oh, June, sometimes you can be so petty. <laughs> Did you honestly think that I'd give my blessing to something like that? Well, at least I'm being honest. I mean, how many married men tell their wives they're going to be unfaithful? Mm. Well, if you're really serious about having an affair with a married woman, it'd better be me. Well, don't be ridiculous. I mean, how can a man have an affair with his own wife? <laughs> Why not? Well, I mean, she'd get to know about it for a start. <laughs> In any case, I mean, I'd probably say things to another woman that I wouldn't say to you. Really? The mind boggles. Well, just supposing I was the other woman. Say something to me now. I oh, don't be silly. Oh, go on, I mean it. No, I mean, no, I mean, this is not the right place. I mean, I've got to have atmosphere. I mean, I've got to have wine and candlelight and romantic music. I mean, everybody knows you can't do it on your own doorstep. Well, I've got a lovely idea. Why don't you take me out tonight to some romantic little restaurant and I'll be whoever you want me to be? Are you sure you haven't had too much to drink? No. <laughs> Come on, I dare you. You mean... Pretend that we're not married? Yes. Well, uh, not to each other. We'll be strangers, meeting for the first time, thrown together by fate. Might be rather interesting. It's not quite what I had in mind. <laughs> I mean, I might be a bit inhibited. You needn't be. You can say anything you like to me. You realise I should be chatting you up, using every cunning device known to man? Yes. I warn you, I should be a completely different person. Might be a pleasant change. You won't know the man that sweeps you off your feet at the station Buffy at King's Cross. The Buffy at King's Cross? Yeah, you know, Trevor Howard and Celia Johnson. Oh, no, that's not the sort of brief encounter you promised. What happened to all the soft lights and sweet music? No, I've always wanted to go somewhere like Arabellas. Uh, <laughs> Arab Arabellas? Oh, blimey, it cost a small fortune. Oh, come on, darling. If we're going to be lovers, we might as well do it properly. I mean, we don't want our whispered intimacies drowned by the 9.15 from Huddersfield. <laughs> well, all right, then I'll probably get it off expenses. <laughs> Arabella's it is. Hmm. But we won't go there together. I'll be there when you walk in, waiting for that first magic moment. I want it to be tender, poignant and touching. You'll be there first, then? Well, of course, obviously. It's bound to take you longer on the bus. <laughs> oh, the one four two is very poignant. Oh yes. <laughs> Would you care for a drink, Monsieur, while you are waiting? Thank you. Just martini, dry, crushed ice, twist of lemon, shaken and not stirred, and a few peanuts, please. <laughs> Do you, uh, do you 
mind if I spoke? Not at all. Thank you. <laughs> Your guest has arrived, monsieur. Ah. Samantha, isn't it? Yes. I'm Rick. <laughs> Would Madame care for an aperitif? I think I'd better stick to vodka and tonic. Uh, yes, madame. I shouldn't, actually. I have had several drinks with my husband before leaving home. I mean, I seem to remember my wife used to drink vodka. You're not together, then? No, not anymore. She just didn't understand me. Oh, is that so? Well, that is a chapter in my life which is best forgotten. There are times now when I, I do feel rather alone. Haven't there been others since then? No one that has meant anything. That is, not until now. Oh, Rick, please don't. I am still married, you know. Have you decided what you want? Yes, I decided that the moment you walked into my life. I knew in my heart that it was wrong, but life is so short, is it? So wrong to, to deny ourselves a fleeting moment of pleasure. Yes, that's true. There haven't been many of those in the last 24 years. Anyway. <laughs> I suppose Terence, that's my husband. I suppose he loves me in his own simple way. But no woman likes to be taken for granted. No. No, that is why perhaps there comes a time in one's life when one needs something new and exciting to happen. I'm starved. I know you are. I know you are. <laughs> Oscar and tonic for Madden, and one martini and peanuts. <laughs> Eat too many of those, Rick, you'll start to look like my husband. <laughs> uh, we'll order now. Uh, yes, sir. Samantha? I'd like to start with Patty. Oh, very good, madam. I'll have a dozen oysters. <laughs> How about a nice big steak? Perfect. Chateaubriand for two? Yes, sir. Well done, sir. Thank you. I thought so, too. <laughs> Perhaps a little salad on the side and a bottle of Chateau Neuf du Pope. Yes, sir. <laughs> Here's to us. To us. And to what the future might hold for us. <laughs> oh, Rick, I do hope we're doing the right thing. There's always the danger that afterwards I might fall hopelessly in love with you. It's probably inevitable. You see, I could be so vulnerable. I mean, has it occurred to you? But I might never have known what love is. What do you mean, never? Well, I wouldn't say this to Terence. In fact, I certainly wouldn't say it to his face. But how shall I put it? Those raging torrents of passion have never really been unleashed. Sure. Samantha. Uh, like Samantha. <laughs> Let's not talk about him. I mean, you won't find me lacking in that direction. As soon as this dinner's over, we're going back to my place and it's straight up the stairs to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you can't be sure of anywhere anymore. Oh, she's a married woman, too. I know, dear. They go off with anyone these days. Mm. I can't imagine what she sees in here. <laughs> June. I'll see you both later. June Billy. Philip. Philip Conway. <laughs> oh, Billy. <laughs> Oh, good heavens, you you haven't changed a bit. Well, neither of you, if anything, even more handsome. <laughs> Should I know you? <laughs> uh, sorry to butt you know, ma'am. Oh, this is my, um, uh, my, uh, uh, my friend, Rick. Sorry, I didn't catch your other name. Uh, Randolph. Rick Randolph. <laughs> it's, it's Philip Conway, a very dear old friend. I used to go out with him before I met uh, my husband. Oh, did you? Yes. Uh, if I had my way, she wouldn't have married anyone else but me. You had your chance. I seem to remember waiting for a phone call that never came. Well, I tried to get a message to you, then I had to rush off to the States. I wrote you a couple of times, didn't you get my letters? <laughs> no. I thought you'd just run out on me. Then when I got back, it was too late. Bill Turner told me you'd got yourself engaged to some podgy little salesman. <laughs> little salesman is now my husband. My God. And, yeah, and he gave us three beautiful children. <clears throat> so she, she tells me. Uh, what's, um, what's all this about then, eh? Oh, <laughs> none of your business. <laughs> I see. Still the same old June. <laughs> <laughs> she used to keep a string of admirers. 
Oh, did she? Oh, tell me more, Mr. Conway. Don't you dare. You said quite enough already. Whatever will Mr. Randolph think of me? Are you married, Phil? No, still the same happily unmarried man. Still living in Kensington? Yes. In that super little flat? Yes. Why don't you come over one evening for a drink, for old time's sake? You never know, I might. But where the hell's the food gang? <laughs> you to your meal. Lovely, lovely to see you again. Ciao. 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 <laughs> I say, Rick, those oysters look scrumptious. Oh, stop the oysters. <laughs> it's never like this at Cardona. Wasn't a very witty turn of phrase, was it, Rick? Not, not Rick. Forget Rick, it's me now. Yeah, I thought so. Your potty little salesman. Oh, what happened to my smooth-talking lover? He just left. <laughs> Darling, I do believe you're jealous. Would you like me to tell you about Philip? Oh, thank you. Spare me the sordid little details. Oh, all right, then. Let's just enjoy our meal, shall we? Oh, on the other hand, if it's something I should know, then go ahead. No, there's nothing to tell, really. <laughs> oh, go on. The truth. Out with it. Out with it. Well... Do you remember before we were married that you told me all about you and Angela Vickers? Did I? Yeah. And you said there was absolutely nothing to it. Yes, that's, that's right. Well, you've nothing to worry about because what happened between Philip and me is precisely the same as you and Angela. Oh, I see. <laughs> June, June, how could you? What's the matter, darling? Oh, nothing, nothing. Enjoy the party. My oysters are lovely. Uh, why, waiter, waiter, waiter. Uh, it's gone four o'clock. Yes, dear, I'm just making the tea. I expect Terry could do with a cup. He's been typing away all day. I know. He seems to be in full flow. Is it still quite hot and torrid? No, I think it's cooled off a bit. In fact, he's gone off the whole idea. Ah, oh, well, perhaps that's just as well. Yes, I think he realised the world wasn't ready for another Harold Robbins. I don't think it was ever ready for this one. <laughs> so, uh, what's he writing about now? Well, I don't know, but the news theme seems to have got him very excited. This, this, this is more like it. This is more like it. Oh, it's a whole new concept of literary endeavour. It's a oh. depth of character and strong, earthy plot, flowing descriptive passages, and bold, vital words that grab you from the very start. Oh, how exciting. Come on, then let's hear some of it. All right. <clears throat> Cuddly Bunny poked his head out of the rabbit hole. Good morning, world, he said. <laughs> Happy Ever After is back tomorrow at the same time, and you can still see Neighbours every weekday morning at 7.30 and 12.30. <laughs> Is it uh, two C's and one S or one C and two S's? Two C's and one S. Thank you. How many O? Two. <laughs> Doesn't look right. Are you sure? Yes. Well, look it up. You look it up. I use another word. <laughs> Spasmodically. <laughs> June, is that one C and two L? Why don't you just put now and again? Good idea. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> June? What is it now? How does this sound? <clears throat> it was a dull, leaden sky. White, fleecy clouds scudded across the moon. 
the wind had gently caressed the branches of an old willow tree, and in the distance, a star twinkled now and again. <laughs> it's a funny way to start a letter to the gas board. <laughs> Oh, no, I, I, I finished that ages ago. Oh, who are you writing to now, then? Nobody. It's not a letter, it's a novel. A what? That is the very first sentence of my book. I didn't know you were writing a book. Well, I only decided a few minutes ago. Oh. Well, what, what, do you, what do you think? Well, it's a bit like the weather forecast. Well, I'm just setting the scene. I mean, give us a chance. There's plenty more to come. Hmm, there'll have to be. I'm on page 198 of this, and I'm only halfway through. Oh, good Lord, better get on with this, then, haven't I? Oh, dear. Ah, star twinkled now and again. Um, an owl hooted with derision. O W L. Thank you. <laughs> Honestly, darling, if you're going to ask me how to spell every other word, it's going to take you ten years 